Hello there. Things are really kicking off in the European Union with these farmer protests and it now looks like the Irish farmers are about to get themselves involved. Despite the deployment of 15,000 gendarmes, including some from their paramilitary units, as well as armoured vehicles, to stop French farmers from bringing food supplies to Paris to a halt, about 30 large tractors managed to swerve the police cordons and break through. And they were last seen heading north to blockade the huge Rungis food market that supplies most of Paris. But it's not just the farmers. The taxi drivers have also joined in on the side of the farmers in Paris. This is getting tasty. And you can see from these images that the farmers are not mucking around. Well, OK, some are spreading some muck about, but they are now absolutely focused on getting a result. And it's not just the farmers themselves. Their children are also getting in on the act. Now, you might disagree with politicising children, but I would hazard a guess that this particular battle between the globalist state and agriculture will be going on for many decades. The establishment does not just give in. It hibernates for a while and then comes out to strike again just when you think you've won. We saw exactly that with Brexit. And now there are rumours, spurred on by these images, that farmers in the Republic of Ireland are about to mobilise in support. And Breitbart is reporting today that the farmer uprising in France continue to grow this week as an estimated 12,000 farmers in over 6,000 tractors enacted roadblocks in at least 120 locations throughout France on Tuesday including access points to major cities such as Paris, Lyon and Marseille. However, some are calling for the protests to set their sights on the EU government. Yes, they're planning to hop across to Brussels and blockade the EU hierarchy too. Are we witnessing a point in history that proves the old adage that the power of the people is greater than that of the people in power? And while all this goes on, President Macron of France and his missus were dining in grand style with the King, Queen and Crown Princess of Sweden. King Carl Gustav, Queen Sylvia and the rest of the family spared no expense at a banquet with the President and the First Lady at Stockholm Palace, reports The Telegraph. Maybe they had gatto for dessert. I wonder if for a moment the irony of him sat there with the elites gorging on the product of farmers' sweat and toil while his own farmers are protesting at low pay and over-regulation ever entered Macron's tiny mind. The optics are not good and it has echoes of the French Revolution. All we need now is for a scarlet pimpernel type to turn up with rubber boats to take the French elite across the channel to the safety of Dover. Then the picture would be complete. But this also has echoes of the future. A future that these elites want to foist on the rest of us. Back to the future of serfdom. We work and starve while they feast and party. Now let's get down to brass tacks. If the farmers lose this battle, it'll be over for the rest of us too. A new world of globalism and serfdom awaits. But there is also the question of what winning would look like. What would our world look like in 10 years' time if the little people prevail? A return to the good old days? Or something completely different? Now, Richard has some views on this. So over to you, Richard. How did this happen? How did we forget about our farmers? Here we are in the West, pretending to be an enlightened society. Yet, we have allowed our farmers to be screwed down by globalists and multinational corporations. And when I say we, I mean we in a collective sense across the Western world. 
Have we become so divorced from the land that we have forgotten where the real power lies? There is an old adage which is, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Yet that is exactly what we have collectively done via our elected representatives. Some unelected as well. What an utterly shameful state of play that we should forget the value of the very people that feed us. But those people, the farmers who get up at the crack of dawn and go to bed way after we sedentary creatures have settled down for the evening to brainwash ourselves with yet another Netflix series. Yes, our farmers have been pushed into a corner with nothing to lose. And now they are reminding all of us exactly where the power does lie in Western civilization. Yes, I for one fear that these farmers will actually destroy our corrupt society. <gasps> Heaven forbid. And this plays though, or potentially could play, into the hands of the globalists. Now don't get me wrong, I fully support our farmers taking on the establishment. I just wonder how much of this civil disobedience has been priced in and is actually a desired outcome by those who wish to centralise power even further. I wonder if centralised control of all things is actually an inevitable outcome. Yes, one that cannot be avoided. Look, our taxi drivers, our farmers, our truck drivers may take down corrupt individual nation states, but can they take down a globally centralised state? I don't know. What I'm trying to ask here is, if the system is brought down, what will replace it? Who will run it? Who will appoint those that run it? Are we actually brave enough to get rid of the system itself? Or are we brave enough to go it alone without a system? Hmm. What we are effectively talking about is deconstructing the globalist network and pushing towards self-sufficient, autonomous micro-nations. The, communi the community, you could say. Be careful, though, what you wish for, because you just might get it. To understand what a globalist um, system collapse will look like, you have to take into account the fact that everything will stop working, for a period of time anyway, until new systems of community governance can take hold, and that could get ugly, especially if you can't get your hands on food or water, and you live in a city, for instance. And no, when I say get your hands on food and water, I don't mean going to the shops, no, no. On a positive note, though, what we today would call an apocalypse apocalyptic uh, scenario in a breakdown of society. <laughs> Such a scenario our, for our forefathers used to call a normal day. The farmers will be all right because they not know what to do. Although I can't see much call for diversity officers and uh, such an upheaval. If you want the farmers to win, if you want them to actually win, then get ready to get your hands dirty. Get ready to dig and get ready to fight for your patch of land. Bring it on, I say, but don't forget, not everyone is able to weather such an extreme shift in society. Not everyone is able-bodied and can stand on their own two feet in a societal collapse. So if it all does come crashing down, we, all of us, need to get together and bring the sick and the vulnerable with us. Because it could turn nasty and they are, they'll need us. Anyway, what do you... Jennifer's and Giles's think about what has been said in this video. Leave your impassioned thoughts in the comment section below for Mr. Taylor and I to read. And get yourselves over to our locals channel and sign up, you know, if you want extra content. And there's a link in the descriptions box below on how to do that. So God bless all of you and bye for now.